NCMP Leong Man Wai raises his hand and said, I have submitted a parliamentary petition from the residents of the affected blocks. You know what happened? The parliamentary petition signed by 361 residents was rejected because it did not meet the requirements of the standing orders of parliament. Nine questions were filed on Amokyo Sirs. Not a single one of these questions were debated in parliament. Why do we have so much money? My Lord has already lost a lot of money. Now the Sirs also have to lose more money. Why are we so greedy? Why are we so greedy? From the grapevine, an uncle was hospitalized from this sad situation. So upset that he fainted from hearing the news in market and had to call ambulance. He fainted again when HDB officer came to talk about 50-year lease. And hospitalized again. Now he is back home. Two days ago, in the Today Online news portal, and I quote: "But based on today's interviews with residents, some remain in a state of shock and anger to understand, accept, and decide what they should do next." Last time. Means damn lucky if you can ask us. Now means very sweet lah if you can ask us. Last time give you money for us. Now ask you pay money for us. If no money you in tears. If you can't get housing loan you fear. If you no CF CPF you say oh dear. Three months they are still pretend never here. One million HDB flash the end is near. The time bomb of the ninety nine year. Who make money and who lose money? It's very clear. Why are we so greedy? On 7th April, the residents of these four blocks in Amokyo woke up to the news that they can ask us. Nothing much happened. The news just reported and nothing much happened. Nine weeks later, I received the HDB financial guide sent that was sent to a resident, and then I posted. Sirs Amokyo, resident has to top up one hundred and eighty-seven thousand dollars for replacement for room flat, and then all hell broke loose. The media were reporting like crazy every day. Reporters were going to interview the residents. I have been writing for more than 30 years. Never have I made a post that have had so many reactions, likes, shares, comments, etc. You know, the way the news is reported makes a world of difference. How come in April when the news report on Sirs Amukyo, nothing happened? Then on 13 June. When I just make one post, it goes viral. Well, maybe that's why we have to use 180 million dollars of taxpayers' money to keep some media going. So, on 13 June, I make the post. On the 27 of June. 325 residents out of the 606 affected residents submitted a petition to the minister. Three days later, on the 30th of June, on a Saturday, the minister and the CEO of HDB went to the site to talk to the residents. And on that same day, on that Saturday, the media reported, oh, we now have two new options for the affected residents. 
two days later, July the 4th, Parliament convenes. Two days sitting, July 4th and 5th. So the first thing that happened that morning at 1.30, not in the morning, Parliament starts at 1.30. NCMP Leong Man Wai raises his hand and said, I have submitted a parliamentary petition from the residents of the affected blocks. You know what happened? The parliamentary petition signed by 361 residents was rejected because it did not meet the requirements of the standing orders of parliament. Nine questions were filed on Amokyo Sirs. Not a single one of these questions were debated in parliament. Why? Because the numbering of the questions were like 72 to 78. So no time. Such an important issue. Parliamentary petition by the residents rejected. Debate in parliament don't have. And what did we have? On the first day, Monday, 4th July, at the end of the parliamentary session, the MP for that particular constituency in Amokyo made an adjournment motion. An adjournment motion where she spoke for 20 minutes and the minister could reply. But you know what's the difference between the adjournment motion and the parliamentary debate? None of the MPs could say anything or ask any questions. So effectively, there was no debate. Why are we so scared? Oh, sorry, it should be, why are we so uh, greedy? So what are the two options? But before that, you have heard many of the speakers say, it came as a shock to the residents of Amokyo. Because in practically all the previous about 83 years in the history of Singapore, almost all, most if not all of them, they don't have to top up any money. Most if not all of them were more than 30 years old. And so when it was said in parliament on 4th July, they said, oh, oh, the May Marceling one, one month after Amokyo Sirs, no need to top up because it's different. Because the Sirs, the, these Marceling flats are not so old. They're only about 30 years old. Hello. As far as I can find from my research, almost all the 83 or so Sirs in the history of Singapore did not require any top up or hardly any top up and almost all of them were more than 30 years old. Like Han Wee Wee said earlier, if this is not shaky statistics, I don't know what is. The two new options. You either take a 50-year lease, or you take an even shorter lease with a lease buyback. For example, you take a 30-year lease, then you sell the remaining 20 years to HDB. They give you a sum of money to top up your CPF life. What if you are still alive after 30 years? Oh, they say, don't worry. When the time comes, uh, we will figure out something for you. <laughs> and you know, the solution to solve the problem has created an even bigger problem. What is the big problem now? Imagine you have all these blocks of flats. They are a mixture of 50 years lease and 99 year lease. So, if I want to rent out my flat in this block, the rental is the same, right? Whether I'm a 50 year or 99 year, the person who rent from me will probably pay me about the same amount. So, what's the big problem? They all the 99 year lease one die lah because. If the rental yield is so different, the price of the 99-year lease will drop a lot relative to other 99-year lease in the rest of Singapore. Why should I pay roughly the same price as other places if I'm buying a 99-year lease in the new Amokyo site when the 50-year lease, the rental yield is so much higher? And so you see, one boo-boo, creates a bigger boo-boo. 
And the latest is an even bigger boo They say now they are considering allowing the 50-year lease to be extended. So maybe later you can extend your lease or the person to buy it from you after your MOP maybe can extend the lease. Try to make the 50-year people a little bit happier but you are actually making the 99-year people even more unhappy. You see, we are, we are what in a situation of no win for anybody. Hey, it's more than three months already, you know, still no solution. Why are we so greedy? Thank you.